Well, we've got this wonderful new thing called BBC Verify uh, that's just appeared. Um, this is apparently is a little office next to the BBC TV newsroom. Uh, I don't know if they've got access to the phone calls that are coming into the editor telling them uh, what we're supposed to think that day and what the news priorities are from the government or maybe from the city. But particularly, we know for a fact that the government put in uh, calls to the uh, news editor at the BBC saying we think this should be the news today. Whether or not they actually do what they're told is another question, but they're certainly, uh, if they start regularly not doing it, then they will be hoofed out of their job. That's quite certain. The BBC's got no real independence. But this woman, Mariana Spring Martin, she's been running this thing called BBC Verify. Uh, and they just launched it, literally. Uh, but it's a bit of a peculiar thing, isn't it? So, for example, we're not having the BBC verifying what was going on at the Bilderberg conference I was at last weekend. In fact, they don't even mention it anywhere on the BBC. Well, that's right. I mean, the BBC is probably more um, careful in its journalism than the Tory printed press. But nevertheless, it's still very, very controlled. And it's very clear over things like Ukraine, where what are essentially psychological warfare scams are just being treated as statements of fact by the, by, by the BBC. Well, what about something as, uh, as, as verified as something like the Butcher, Butcher Massacre last year by the Russians? Well, I mean, yes, but that's, that is, uh, you know, the, 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 the evidence for what happened there, to my mind, points rather to the SBU and the Ukrainians as carrying out that massacre. But if you talk to anybody in the well, mainstream, just, just, they all listen, know in a nutshell, that Butcher was carried nutshell, out by the Russians. I mean, that's very, it's very unlikely, isn't it? Because what happened is the Russians retreated when the Ukrainians arrived in Butcher they discovered that there had been a massacre taking no, place. No, it didn't work like that, Tony. In fact, the Russians retreated as part of an agreement with Kiev. Kiev. Uh, the mayor of Bucha uh, was on his Facebook page saying, thank goodness the Russians are gone, we're all quite safe here, and uh, you know we're, we're, we're quite happy that to be freed by our own forces. And then three days later, these bodies appeared all over the centre of Bucha. How come nobody would noticed them three days before when the Russians were in control? And a lot of them, I think, were actually identified by the SBU, the Ukrainian secret police, as potential collaborators with the Russian forces when they came in. And collaborating can just mean accepting a, a, a packet of pampers from them or some bottled water. So and those people were then executed by the SBU, not by the Russians. So what you're saying is that the uh, BBC verifies should be examining themselves. They should be looking at yeah. the BBC's own well, reports. Yes, that's well, not likely, is it? No, so what's happening here is we've got a massive, massive fall away of trust of, of the London mass media, such as the BBC, and in fact, many ways, led by the BBC as the state broadcaster. And as that trust is falling away to record lows, the BBC have decided, well, we need to set up a little unit of journalists. Well, it's actually not that little. 60 journalist team it is, apparently, uh, working for network TV and radio to counteract fake news. Well, what's happening is because of the existence of the internet and shows like this, they feel as if they've got to try and make more of an effort to determine what they are, what they are prepared to to uh, you know to verify as you know trusted information and what they're pre what they're prepared to cast to the outer darkness and that's because frankly we're at war and therefore we are being fed lies and propaganda and this unit will no doubt fulfill that function quite blatantly so uh yeah so that's the unit let's have a listen now to mariana spring then uh, introducing herself uh she was born in the 1990s uh, she's a BBC broadcast journalist, allegedly. Uh, and here she is explaining what BBC Verify is all about. We're a new brand and we are a physical location um, above the newsroom in London. Um, and the point of the team, as you said, is to verify video, to fact check, to counter disinformation um, and to analyse really complex stories so we can get to the truth of what's going on. Why does this matter? Well, mistruths can cause really serious harm to society and to the people in them. And so we want to show you our workings and really help you understand how we get to the bottom of what's happening. And I'm going to give you a bit of a flavour of the kind of work that the team are doing. Uh, so we're able to look at maps, to geolocate um, specific uh, situations, stuff that's going on. Um, this is just a map of central London, where we are now. And this is New Broadcasting House, where I'm speaking to you from. 
Um, and it's not so important perhaps for the centre of London, but it is when we're analysing war zones or what's happening in hard to reach places. And there's a story on the BBC website today. It's looking at Russian fortifications um, on the front lines in Ukraine. Uh, and you can read more about it there. Um, and there are other ways that we also are able to interrogate what's going on, including on social media. Um, I have some undercover accounts that I've set up for the BBC's Americas podcast. And we use these kinds of undercover accounts. And these are the characters that the accounts uh, are, uh, belong to, um, uh, to be able to really understand polarization online and how um, what's happening on our social media feeds and what we're being recommended and pushed to us can affect all of us. Um, and they don't offer us a totally um, exhaustive insight into what's going on, but they can help us understand just how social media works. Um, and then there's also investigating uh, other mistruths and the real world harm they can cause. Um, at the moment, I'm investigating the UK's conspiracy theory movement. I'm trying to understand more about how it's evolved and intensified since uh, the pandemic here in the UK. I'm looking at the alternative media that finds itself at the heart of this movement and a conspiracy theory newspaper that's a part of that as well. I'm looking at the way that alternative media is funded. I'm looking at its impact on local communities. I'm looking at its connections with far right figures and also its foreign links. Um, that's for a podcast series that will be coming out in June. It's called Mariana in Conspiracy Land uh, and it will be available on BBC Sounds Radio 4. Asking that question, could January the 6th or a German coup attempt like we saw um, there ever happen here. So that's uh, Mariana Spring there, Martin, explaining what this BBC verify. A lot of public money, uh, or at least uh, you know, licence fee payers' money. Maybe this is why people are reluctant to spend their money on licence. Basically telling us that uh, if you didn't trust what you were seeing on the BBC, Mariana Spring is going to convince you that it's true. Well, I mean, this is information warfare, isn't it? This is what this is. It's all very well to say that we're going to get to the bottom of stories and we're going to tell you the truth. Um, but the whole trope of these people are conspiracy theorists, we are not. Whereas in actual fact, it's quite possible that the conspiracy theorists are the journalists and it's the BBC well, that are conspiracy theorists. I wonder it's, whether, just, it's just a term of abuse, isn't uh, well, it? Well, yes, and it, is, it also it muddies the waters because some of these conspiracies are true and some are false. But this term, conspiracy theory, maybe she should do a report into the origins of that. Well, this is the this is what's lacking, isn't it? Is this wider wider con uh, perspective? As you and I know, Tony, the term conspiracy theory was thought up by the CIA as a way of discrediting people asking questions about the assassination of JFK. That's right. That Mark Lane, for example, who was a very famous lawyer in the United States, mm. he was getting quite close to the fact fact. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that uh, the CIA were behind killing the American president. So. But that's just a conspiracy uh, theory. Oh, of Tony. course, of course. So, so as, we as people got close to it, uh, so this CIA term, and it's now the actual document where this is suggested in the Central Intelligence Agency was published, wasn't it, under the US Freedom of Information Act? That's right. So in actual fact, those who've done their research know where the term comes from. I wonder if this lady has done that research. I very much doubt it. She's using a lazy trope, conspiracy theory, to, to, to label things that she doesn't agree with. And of course, she's right. There's all sorts of uh, rubbish on the internet. You've got, you know, uh, caveat emptor, let the buyer beware. She didn't you really know? talk there about, for example, the BBC's um, news coverage saying that there were weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Well, indeed. So, in other words, this is the establishment creating an establishment narrative to underline establishment perspectives on the way the world works. So, no doubt, we will find the situation where people who critique the war in the Ukraine are all outed as secret Putin agents and all the rest of it. It's, it's old, tired stuff, but it gets wheeled out in every war confrontation that we've had through history, and this is just the latest iteration of it, isn't it? Well, it certainly seems to be. Um, and in the meantime, I wonder how, you know, to what extent the BBC are covering the fact that Britain is becoming rat-infested. Uh, a rat map of the UK has re revealed the worst rodent infestations across the country. Well, I can actually remember the uh, day and the news story. Uh, it, this would be about 15 years ago. Maybe it was just not long actually after we started, so maybe 12 years ago, Martin, uh, we started doing this programme. Um, that Bristol City Council closed its um, department which was devoted to...